You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Buddy, here I am, and it is the first Freaker Friday of the year. Do you have your freak on? I have a blanket on. (laughs) This is Grammy Mary here on RealLibertyMedia.com channel 3, and I am in my rocket chair. And I tell you what, I made a big batch of chili the other day, and wow, do I have fuel. (laughs) (laughs) oh my lord yeah the rest of that's going in the freezer (laughs) that's all there is to it i've had enough chili for a while (laughs) oh well let's see yeah we are on real liberty media.com channel three we're also on the spreaker channel and we are on RLM radio.xyz and let's see RLM tune in station and RLM internet radio station and lots of other RLM num 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 places as well as going to be on um YouTube later this evening or maybe not maybe tomorrow I don't know but it'll be on there later <laughs> Thank you barman I see you tweeting me out over here on Twitter I truly do appreciate it I was kind of it's been a week yes I my story is that I'm getting all of this craziness out of the way the first week and then I'm gonna go around that bend (laughs) yeah I think I've gone around the bend I've gone over the hill and up around the bend and now I'm just playing but that's okay because I'm enjoying it Oh, I got me a couple other stalkers, though. Hey, that's just pretty freaking awesome. Or maybe I just don't turn the corner. I haven't gone around that bend fast enough, apparently. Hmm. Okay. Hey, Bonger and Matt Goss. Hey there, guys. How you doing? See you over here on Twitter. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not going to retweet because, yeah. I have had... <laughs> Did I tell you? <laughs> okay, over here in the corner pocket. Yeah, Fluke just had to let me know that that duck has already been nabbed. There's all kind of people logged in over here, though. And uh, hey there, hi there, ho there. Merry, happy sh- uh, shawla days. Oh, that's a dollar sign. <laughs> cha-ching a days. Cha-ching a days. I did not spend a lot of money on the Chichinga days, and I'm very proud of myself. But hey there, everybody over in Corner Pocket, if you're listening in. Um, over here on this Freedoms Network, I see Grimmy over here, and he shared me over here. Thank you ever so much, Grim. I really do appreciate it. Um, Clo- uh, Trump has been in office one year and has already fixed global warming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> It's really easy to fix something that ain't there, you know? (laughs) Just going to put that out there. I also see Mental Pancakes was over here for a while, as well as Java Doctor and KD Troxel. And the lovely Miri B was here as well. Yeah, I saw that about the... uh, the Clintons fire and oh hey it just happened to be so they say in a room full of servers and hard drives that were destroyed but another thing that I heard was also that it um, was in the security area you know where the Secret Service people reside and so it's not it wasn't necessarily at the Clinton's house, which why would you keep that kind of shit at your house anyway when you got armed security protecting it all the time you know until there's a subpoena (laughs) oops hate when that happens darn it all okay uh let's see i'm gonna check twitter one more time chuck woolery what do you have to say chuck woolery allegations just a reminder reagan was a stupid actor what could he know 
Bust was an idiot. I think you meant Bush, honey. A buffoon. Now Trumples is an imbecile, etc. Jimmy Carter was brilliant. Okay. Clinton was a Rhodes Scholar. Obama, smartest guy in the universe. I see a trend. Do you? Yeah, I'm kind of seeing it as well, Chuckles. And wow, you know, the ones with an R that must stand for retard. <laughs> And the ones with the D, well, in my mind, that stands for doofus. But a slur is not an argument. So I have to remember that as well. And lots of other people need to remember that too. You know, all of you people out there that are slurring instead of coming up with a valid argument, try and come up with a valid argument. I might actually pay attention to you and not laugh. Might. Maybe, but then again, <laughs> I might laugh anyway, just because it's like, okay, you may think that's a valid argument, but I'm finding it extremely amusing right about now. Oh, can America's power grid withstand the brutal winter from the Washington Examiner? Mm, maybe, maybe not. Excellent question to pose. Thank you ever so much. Now I'm going to just go ahead and shut Ooh, wait, huh? Okay, some someone over here on Twitter said Justice Department investigating the Clinton Foundation over pay to play allegations. But it's from faux news. So hmm I yeah, I think Slick Willie is going to uh pass beyond this physical realm before anything happens to him. Simply because you know they don't really want to, I mean, cripes, they aren't even opening the Kennedy stuff, even though everybody except for Daddy Bush Sr. has kicked the bucket one way or t'other. They aren't going to open that stuff yet because, well, there might be some dire repercussions from that shit. You never know. Okay, over here on Fakey Book, who do I see over here? I see Jeremy is over here. Um, and Hashim, and hey, Larry Woods is over here, and he's posting like crazy again. Uh, da -da -da -da. looks like that's about it for now. Vinny has been posting like crazy over here as well. Good job, Vinny. You just keep posting like a wild man. Okay, over here on Mines, I really don't see anybody playing along over here on Mines, but that's okay. I don't mind. You know, it's really hard to mind if you don't have one. Just put, or at least not one that really gives a shit. Let's put it that way. Okay, and now to the place where you need to be if you want to give me static. And sweetheart, if you are listening in over on the Spreaker channel, I'm sorry I don't remember your name because, well, I've eaten since then. I've also slept since then. And I've walked through multiple doorways since then. So let's just say I've had a lot of mind wipes since Wednesday. No. I think it was last Friday. In any case, if you're listening over there and you really want to give me some static, come on over to the RLM. It's reallibertymedia.com and click on um, just create a nickname and log in and say hey. Say hey. Because then I'll say hey back. But I really don't, eh, I can't, I, yeah. <laughs> Those that are usual uh, listeners pretty much know that, yeah, yeah, that's just Grammy. <laughs> okay, over here in the RLM, right up top, I see Grimner, who is the RLM god. Do I need to scroll up to see Barman? I do. I see Barman is here. Hey, Barman, thank you ever so much for tweeting me out. I know Grimmy made you do it. I know he did because Grimmy's kind of like that. Um, I also see the lovely Moose Girl is here. Moosey! Moosey and Grim will be on later on this evening for the Freakers Ball, so be sure to check that out, because that is always a good time from what I remember from when I could stay up late enough to listen. Okay, I listened to the replays. <laughs> wow. i just been a busy, busy Grammy lady, and I just, I need to go to bed early. Some Tom Pluckard and something about my dogs thinking that they need to get up at six in the morning so that they can go pee and okay, that's fine. I'll let you outside, but then I can't go back to sleep. Some bitch. What the hell? 
That's just not right. I also see the lovely Kate is here. Hey, Kate. And she's a bouncing. So it's perfect because she is using the new RLM um, Android app. So, booyah. There is an RLM Android app for those of you out there. And maybe if I'm really coordinated, I'll be able to include it in the blog to the show. So if I'm really coordinated and if I remember, if I don't walk through a doorway or eat something or squirrel. <laughs> okay, let's see. Who else is over here? I see Asmodeus Asmo is here. Hey, Asmo, how are you doing? How's the business going? Yeah, I know, Rob works. I am all fueled up. Or at least my co-workers, you know, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, uh, let's see. Go, Grammy, go. Vinny, I see you. Uh, the lovely Beth Z is here. Hi, Beth. How are you doing? I see you be chitty-chatting a whole lot. But you know what, sweetheart? I get to see the chitty-chat, and then I get to check back later. And it's like my it didn't stay scrolling. And so I'll put a comment in there, and then I'll look over and go, oh, holy crap and holy. I am like five bazillion comments late on that one. <laughs> a little slow on the uptake. Oh, well. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Chalcedony. How you doing, sweetie? I also see a double dip and a Chloe going on in the house. Oh, that's a that's a weird looking froggy over there on uh, on mines. It's kind of a cool little animation thing though sweet okay freaking Vinny we got a freaking Vinny he's a freaking Vinny so is that is that some kind of Arkansas kind of thing Vinny hmm I also see I'm here kind of sort of maybe as well as I be Don C and Java 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 Dr. 2 is in the house booyah Rob works just fired up the bubbler again yes I'm a little slow on the scrolling sorry and let's see, Java, yeah, JJ's, hi JJ's, JJ's is that wonderful Scottish fellow from webcom.co.uk, and he plays some awesome music, you need to go check him out, even if you can't really understand him, because he gets to talking real fast with that Scottish accent, I don't have an accent, I just talk like Grammy, and I don't talk fast at all, <laughs> just ask me, I'll tell you. Oh, well, go give JJ's a shout or a listen. And sometimes he pops over here on the RLM and plays as well, which is booyah bonus round. I also see Juana Taco is here. Mmm, you know what? Baked taters tonight, gravy, peas. Mmm, she gone. Yes, no more chili. She gone. <laughs> Hi, Pete Bunyan. How are you doing? Tim. Burr. And looky there, the lovely Rain is in the house. Hey, Rain, how are you, sweetheart? I also see RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel, as well as Rob Works, the Bubbler Man, because booyah, he can fire that bubbler. He is a trained professional. You can try it at home, but you probably won't do it nearly as well as Rob does. I also see Trust No One, who is the Bitcoin bazillionaire of the RLM chat. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Beetle! I see you, Beetle, and I see that it's just colder than a witch's tit in mid-January in your neck of the woods. What the hell? You need to tell Madonna to leave, because she's a witch, and she's always got the... And moving along. <laughs> Hi, Dakota. How are you, honey? You're also up there in that... Zone. Damn it, it is very cold up in your neck of the woods. I also see Dima is in the house as well as Frumpy. Frumpy was sharing some fun stuff earlier today as well. And Gooberzilla, Gooberzilla, who's building a spaceship. I just know he is. He's building a spaceship and he's going to take us all out of here. But Goober, you better make it out of some really splendiferous and special biffy material either that or make it a multi-dimensional ship instead of a spaceship because from what i understand getting past that van allen radiation belt from you know just from some of the stuff that i've been researching i don't think we have anything that'll survive making through that so good luck with i think you'd be better doing a, a multi-dimensional kind of thing something that could pop out 
and then pop in somewhere else. That would be cool. I don't want to go for your first ride, but I will go for your second. You know, let's work out the bugs first. Okay, uh, Kozu is in the house. Hey, Kozu, how are you? The lovely Mary B from Down Under, who is having very warm weather down under. I read an article the other day, or um, an op-ed, or a blog, or whatever you wish to call it, where they um, espoused that, uh, Australia is not real. It's a figment of our imagination. It's just a code word for all of the people that the uh, British Empire murdered. Because they just took them down to the South Pacific and then just dumped them off a ship. So there really is no Australia. So, uh, Mary B, I have no clue where you're living, but apparently it's not Australia. <laughs> So you need to come up with another name because that's a code word. Oh, well. Yes, Moosey, I think D stands for dumbass, too. Although doofus works just almost, well, no, dumbass sounds better. Okay, Moy is here. Moy, 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 Moy. I love that name. That's so fun to say. Nensun Dubois. That's another fun one. I get all the facial exercises that I need with that one. I also see Poxified is in the house. Poxified, well, okay, he's logged in, but he's marked away. And Pon Popon Sauce is here. Marked away, but still loitering somewhere. Lurker. Lurker. And looky there, Slim Jim Flim is in the house, as well as the cuddly one, Teddy. I have no idea if you're a cuddly one, but if you have a name like Teddy, you must be cuddly. That's what I decreed. I also see the one, the only, the Phantom to round out the crew. And Phantom is the one that made my wonderful intro. Thank you ever so much, Phantom, for that. I have been working it, working it, working it. Okay. What all? Oh, I caught you freaking, Vinny. I be freaking, Vinny, folk. Oh, you be freaking folk, all right. Yes, you will. What? Oh, good Lord. I I have in the background, I have the, the feed scrolling on uh, Twitter, or not on Twitter, on Minds, and I just saw a kid sitting on a potty chair and working the mouse. It's like, whoa, that's, whoa. Step away from the computer. That's not cool. You should, uh, although you're just kind of shitting around while you're on the computer, but hey. Uh, the Van Allen belt. No, that's not space junk, honey. That's actually a radiation belt. Well, see, Cooperzilla, it's not going to stop you if you have a multidimensional vehicle that can just pop in and pop out. Find the wormholes. Go through them. That's how you can do it. Um, and Moosey, there ain't nothing that they've made so far, at least that they're telling us, that will be able to survive going through the Van Allen radiation belt. But they used to be able to have stuff that could go through because, um, you know, they made it to the moon a couple of times, so they say. <laughs> oh, um, I don't think that would work, Frumpy, that gold or one inch of lead shielding because the melting point is too low. So I don't think you can make it through that. Well, you know, they lost the technology. Just ask them. They, they, You know, those people at NASA, apparently someone come in and cleaned. And now they can't find anything because they put everything away in a place that made absolute sense. And now they can't find it because they put it away so good. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Where do I want to go? I've been seeing all kind of fun stuff. Um, let's see. Niagara Falls is coated in ice and looks absolutely insane. Yes, it does. I don't remember where I saw this, but it is kind of cool. And it literally, actually, it's beyond cool. It's freaking cold is what it is. I'm going to put this over here in the chat because, yeah, pop through your Stargate. That's right. And yes, Goober, that is why they went to Iraq. And that's why they're concerned and not letting too many people close to the pyramids anymore. Because pyramids are starting to hum. 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 
Oh, Rob, I hadn't thought of that. If it's a belt, just jump. You know, I know an awful lot of people that have Dunlap disease. It Their belly done lapped over their belt. So maybe that's all you got to do. You just got to find some really fat guys and um, have them go up and they can Dunlap over that radiation belt and then you've got a free ride. <laughs> or not. Um... Oh, man, Grim. Okay, Grim just informed me that all the design specs were on Hillary's servers. Son of a bitch. You know, the one place where nobody would look, because if it says Hillary, it's like, really? I don't want to touch it. I might catch whatever she's got. But, mm, apparently, apparently, that's not the way it works. Hmm. Okay. I am going to go to this one that I saw earlier in the chat on RLM. Actually, after I got home, I was really concerned about being able to make it home in time for the show. But, yeah, because we were, you know, it's been crazy. I mean, you know, people breaking down, travelers, all that fun stuff. Lots of people driving. Lots of people spending family time, which is a good thing and yet possibly not. But, um... Also, the big boss was up today, and they were doing reviews. Oh, darn. I had to leave before I got mine. <laughs> oh, darn. I feel bad. But I really, I had to stay a little late just so um, the one that was in there could cover phones uh, when I leave. So it's like, ah. I was really, really a little bit concerned. Oh, well. I made it home. It all started went off without a hitch so far and so i saw this in the rlm chat it's from investmentwatchblog.com doctors confirm woman beats cancer with natural supplements after she stops chemotherapy and takes you can either pronounce it turmeric or turmeric i've always called it turmeric but turmeric in this instance really does fit because yeah it made the tumors go away go away so a woman who battled blood cancer for years without success finally halted the disease with turmeric it's been or it has been reported and doctors say her case is the first recorded instance in which a patient has recovered by using the spice after stopping conventional medical treatments. Okay, note they said it is the first recorded instance because I'm sure there is an awful lot of other times where they said, oh, well, you know, sometimes they just go into remission and we just don't know why. Or, you know, they'll come up with some other bullshit excuse. But this one is actually recorded. That's kind of cool. So, <clears throat> the editor's note says that many people have successfully beaten various types of cancer with natural supplements, but it almost never gets attributed to that by the medical professionals. Why? Because it takes away their job security and their cha-ching. Have you heard about the markup on chemotherapy drugs? Seriously, they are going to say it was their shit that did it. Yeah, that just helped you to where you didn't suffer so many adverse side effects. That's usually the storyline they use. So, it is quite interesting that doctors in England, uh, figures, not in the U.S., but in the U.K., doctors in England have verified a case in which a woman with blood cancer that was not stopped by traditional chemotherapy was able to stop it with turmeric which can be purchased in any health food store in America until the FDA gets a hold of it and says, oh, we're going to have to look at this as a medicine now. You're going to need a prescription. Price is going to go like 100, per, 100 times higher. And you're yeah, it's going to suck balls. So you better get some now. Uh, the amounts that she took were standardized to 8 milligrams per day. You have to do your homework and research and learn that not all supplements are the same quality. Truth. Be very, very careful who you purchase from. A lot of times that really good price break that you get isn't just because they're feeling ever so charitable and telling you, well, if you buy in bulk, 
sometimes that really good price break is because they didn't just cut the price. They also cut the product with bullshit stuff, filler, that's probably not good for you. So please research everything. Apparently, um, let's see, I have been blessed of the Lord to see medical conditions in both my life and those I love become either cured or greatly improved by natural fruits, vegetables, spices, herbs, and natural supplements. God's ways are always the best ways. If you don't wish to believe it's God, then just call it Creator because Creator leaves the door open for somebody who is so advanced technologically, spiritually, that they started this ball rolling. Because, you know, when you really stop and think about it, all of these Scientologists that... Um, the ones that are pract practitioners of scientism, not Scientology, but scientism, you know, all of those people, they can explain everything. If you just give them that first miracle, you know, how nothing just all of a sudden decided to be something and go boom. You give them that and they can explain everything else. And, you know, those explanations are so complicated. They have to use letters from foreign alphabets. And it doesn't make a shit and bit of difference what part of the world you live in. They're always going to use letters from a foreign alphabet. And those, those equations to prove themselves, yes, those things can take up five or six chalkboards. It was really, really tiny print. But you know, the more convoluted it is, the more true it is, isn't it? Unless you apply Occam's razor. And you know what? That just, that just made me think, what? I got a flasher going on here. Yes. What's that? I see someone. Oh. Oh. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Grim. Let's see. We have two now. We have two? We have two? Oh, those moons. Those aren't real. You know that, don't you? They aren't real. <laughs> or maybe they are. Can you touch them? Has anybody touched them? Anybody? Raise your hand. Put put the other hand on a Bible while you're at it. I touched the moon. <laughs> yeah, I've touched quite a few moons myself, but, you know, they're the ones that have cracked down the middle. <laughs> okay, let me see. Achim's razor. Yeah, we'll just look up Achim's razor real quick. And uh, we'll see. Um, dun, 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 dun. So, Occam's razor is a problem-solving principle attributed to William of Ockham. Ockham. So, is that that's like uh, Jeff Dunham, only Ockham. So, let's take a peek. So, <clears throat> according to Occam's razor, the principle. Uh, from philosophy, suppose there exist two explanations for an occurrence. In this case, the simpler one is usually better. Another way of saying it is that the more assumptions you have to make, the more unlikely an explanation is. Occam's razor applies in the philosophy of science, but also more generally as well. So, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, so, da, 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 da. okay. The translation, okay. More things should not be used than are necessary, which basically means that if there are several possible ways that something might have happened, the way that uses the fewest guesses or theories is probably the right one. 
However, Occam's razor only applies when the simple explanation and complex e explanation both work equally well. If the more complex explanation does a better job than the simpler one, then you should use the complex one. But that's not always true. Sometimes you believe the more complex one simply because that's the one that's been drilled into your face the whole time. So back to my article, you know, in the whole Occam's razor. If they are using supplements, if they are eating healthy and what you did to them did not help, but then eating healthy and using natural supplements worked, go with the natural supplements that cured it. Dynick Ferguson is now leading a normal life after giving up on grueling treatments that failed to stop it. With her myeloma spreading rapidly around three rounds of chemotherapy and four stem cell transplants. Wow. You know, the chemotherapy just totally destroys everything. It doesn't care. It takes out the healthy as well as the sick. And stem cells are only good if you have healthy, viable cells for them to copy off of. But if chemotherapy took out all the healthy, viable cells, then the stem cells ain't going to have a whole hell of a lot to work with. This 67-year-old began taking 8 grams of curcumin a day, one of the main compounds in turmeric, or turmeric. The cancer, which has an average survival of just over 5 years, was causing increasing back pain, and she had already had a second relapse. But it stabilized after Mrs. Ferguson from North London came across a remedy on the internet in 2011 and decided to try it as a last resort. Why not? Desperate times call for desperate measures. And even if those desperate measures are, let's go on natural and stop listening to the ass munch that's charging me at literally an arm and a leg. The tablets are expensive. 50 pounds for 10 days, which, yeah, that is expensive. But as kitchen turmeric contains just 2% curcumin, it would be impossible to eat enough to get the same dose. Mrs. Ferguson, who was diagnosed in 2007, continues to take curcumin without further treatment, and her cancer cell count is negligible. Now, I'm sure that 50 pounds for 10 days is still a lot less than what the chemo treatments were, a lot less. Her doctors from Bart's Health NHS Trust in London wrote in the British Jour uh, Medical Journal case reports, to the best of our knowledge, this is the first report in which curcumin w um, has demonstrated an objective response in progressive disease in the absence of conventional treatment. Yada, 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 blah, da, blah, da, blah. In other words, what we tried didn't work. We tried it multiple times. We made her sicker and sicker and sicker. But when she stopped using our shit and went for this other stuff, damn, she got better. But we can't say that. The experts, led by Dr. Abbas Zaida, um, said some... My, uh, myeloma, is that how you say that? Some of these patients took dietary supplements alongside the conventional treatment, but few, if any, used dietary supplementation as an alternative to standard therapy. And see, if you took it along with the conventional treatment, then it just helped the conventional treatment. Well, yes, it did, and it actually kept her immune system from crashing. Hey! <laughs> Which basically meant, get rid of your shit, because it was crashing her immune system. Huh. But they added, <clears throat> there's always that caveat in there. In the absence of further treatment, the patient plateaued and has remained stable for the past five years, with good quality of life. Well, she has plateaued and remain stable for the past five years, which is a longer life expectancy than you would have given her. Since the turn of the century, more than 50 studies have tested curcumin, the pigment in turmeric that gives it the bright yellow color. They suggest the spice can protect against several cancers, as well as Alzheimer's, heart disease, and depression. 
It has also been shown to help speed uh, recovery after surgery and effectively treat arthritis. But although it is widely used in Eastern medicine, it's been studied for its anti-inflammatory and antiseptic effects. Curcumin is not widely prescribed because it has never been tested in large-scale trials. And if it does get tested in large-scale trials, dun, 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 here comes the FDA. They're going to say that it's a drug and you can no longer just get it off of the store shelf or from whoever you're buying it from on the internet. You'll need to have a prescription. It's just, no. I would much rather just not have all of those trials and tests. And how about word of mouth? You know, those that survive spread the word. And they say, this really worked for me. And it might work for you. And hey, you know, when you survive and then you just go out and you tell people, you know what? That shit that I was doing with the doctor didn't help. Made me feel like crap. But I tried this as a last resort. And you know what? I'm doing amazingly well don't need any tests or studies in, do ya? Word of mouth is a wonderful thing. Apparently, Dr. P- or Professor Jamie Kavanaugh, one of the authors of the paper, stressed it may not work for all patients, which, duh, there is no do-all, be-all, end-all, cure-all that works for everyone. There just isn't, because each biological system, a.k.a. body, is just a wee bit different. He did say that a lot of my patients take curcumin at different stages of their treatment, and I don't object to it. Well, isn't that swell of you? Apparently, um, Dynex is the best response I have observed, and it is a clear-cut case that we had, uh, because we had stopped all other treatment. Mrs. Ferguson, who runs Hidden Art, a not-for-profit business helping artists market their work, is frustrated doctors cannot recommend the spice and wants more research carried out. She said, I hope that my story will lead to more people finding out about the amazing health benefits of curcumin. Um, Because what she had affects some 5,500 people in the UK every year killing nearly 3,000. So, yeah. Let's go for a natural, shall we? Because you know what? If nothing else, it's not going to do any worse than the poison they're pushing. It really isn't. And maybe, just maybe, at least your quality of life will be much better. Okay, I'm going to get this shared over here on this FN site. And uh, let's see, we'll do, let me find me an emoticon. There, that one's appropriate. Although the doctors are still poo-poos. Poo-poos. Okay, and I'll put this over here on mines as well, just because. Now, to go to this wonderful link, did you know ITV.com? Apparently, female traffic light signals a step forward for equality. Oh, isn't that just precious? Now our little stick figures have to have a skirt. How sweet. How stupid. How much is that going to cost? Who's the one that sold them on that idea? Do they own stock in the company that makes the little stick figures with the skirt thing? Wow. Crossing light symbols depicting women instead of men have been adru- introduced in Melbourne, Australia. Oh, okay. We'll see. Since since Australia isn't real, it's just a made-up thing, and that's just code talk for murdering a bunch of bad people. Um, this isn't real anyway, but we're going to go there, you know, because, well, it's something to read. <laughs> Apparently, uh, campaigners were calling it progress for equality. Hmm. Well, I think what you need to do as progress for equality then is you need to, for the red light, 
do like a car with a, a person laying down in a skirt like under one of the wheels that's what happens if you walk during when the red light is on you get splat that was my idea that was my idea if you do that for one of those little lens thingies I get a cut okay <laughs> Apparently, the Australian Lobby Group Committee for Melbourne is behind the move. Oh, good job. Um, Martine Letts, CEO of the group, said, There was unconscious bias built into our brains because we are accustomed to seeing male figure. Well, <clears throat> I had never really thought of it. I never thought of there being a bias in an inanimate object. You know, I just saw, ooh, that little figure says it's okay for me to trundle. As if, as if, I can't just look to the left, look to the right, look in front of me and look behind me. And then make the decision, is it safe for me to dart out there? No, obviously, that is not something that we can do. So we have to have, we have to start with these stupid little idiot lights to say, yes, you can go now. Oh, you have to stop. This is like hot potato or what was that game? No, well, we used to play red light, green light. You know, it's like Simon says, only with lights. What the hell, people? Mm. She went on to add that if we see more female figures on traffic lights, that might also have a positive impact on changing the way we view the world. Honey, inanimate objects and what you see around you, you see those things because of the way you view the world. If you stop being such a whiny ass and saying that everybody else is picking on you and you kind of get a little bit of, oh, elf confidence, yeah, and a little bit of elf control, you just, yeah, or I could say self, but, you know, you're being just a wee bit of a baby. So, um, yeah, fix the inside first, and then you'll see the outside completely differently. Okay, what? The guy's comments on that article was, so we know it's female because it's got a skirt, but if I say skirts are for men, then 1,000 members of the intergalactic gender police camp in my mentions. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny, Grim. Now I need to get down to that one. Okay. Apparently, the not-for-profit organization compromises 120 businesses and community groups and is aiming to have equal representation of women and men in every crossing in Victoria. So I want to have equal chalk outlines, too, of people that step out and get splatted because they didn't freaking pay attention and you know what odds are they weren't paying attention because they was looking at that little device in their hands look up and observe the world around you what a novel idea ITV News asked people at a crossing in London what they thought of the initiative with people giving mixed reviews yeah I would have there's even a little lady on the new instructions for pedestrians. Oh, good God. Mm. Wow. Let's see. Margaret says the country's gone officially mad. Now we have to change half of all pedestrian crossing green man icons to women for gender equality. Yeah, that's just really smart. Yeah, let's, let's spend some money. But you know what? Creating jobs. Shovel ready. They're shoveling shit. Scott says, yep, first thing I taught my son was that the pedestrian crossing symbols were a direct message that men were superior to women. Good one, Scotty. Thank you for teaching your son that because he needed to know that valuable life lesson. Crossing lights have been used before as a beacon for change across the world. <laughs> Pun intended. Brr. Several European cities feature women guides. Crossings in New Zealand show a woman's voting rights campaigner. Whoop-de-doo. In Penrith, Australia lights are 
at two crossings were changed in honor of long-serving female counselor whoop de dip de doo and 10 new crossings in the middle of Melbourne will be trialed for a year. I wonder how many of those will get shot out. <sighs> BB guns. Equal rights. I know you'll say that it's aggressors. I know you will. They're, they're aggressing. Well, you know, if you weren't being an aggressive little sot in the first place and saying, I demand my equal right and I want to have the bigger half. <laughs> Morons. Morons. That's all I got. To, well, that's not all I got to say about that, but I'll, I'll stop for now. Wow. Equal schmequal. You know what? You get treated equally when you behave equally and when you perform equally. If you can't put up, shut up. Got it? Oh. I get so frustrated with people that say, I should, you know, it's like one of the, I had a discussion with someone the other day saying, they really need to make minimum wage $15 an hour because it's just not right. And $15 an hour is a livable wage. And I said, you know, I happen to know that $15 an hour is a livable wage because I've got 20 years of experience at what I'm doing and that's what I'm making right now. So you coming in on entry level you know, where your qualifications are basically, sir, would you like fries with that? And you think that you should get paid the same as somebody that's got 20 years of experience at what they're doing. No. No. People will treat you better and value you more if you give them a reason to. It really is that simple. Achim's razor. Don't you know? It is the simplest path to follow. You behave in a respectable manner and people will respect you. That's kind of simple too. Okay. Let's see. There. That's how I'll put that. Now... What else is going on over here? Dangerously cold. Yes, it is. And yes. <clears throat> oh, Moosey, I had the heater going underneath my desk today. It was it was a wee bit chilly. And someone said, oh, well, it's not that cold. Really? Okay. You're weird. Go away. I have my heater on. Oh, wow. Minus 32 with the wind chill beetle? Shit. We get that stuff out here from time to time. And yeah, we stay inside when it does that. It's like, no. No. Okay, what's going on? Oh, yes, Jeff Sessions. Yes, he does need to go bye-bye. He does. He, unless he's just being another excellent example of this is what you don't want here. You know? Oh, yep. Don't you eat that yellow snow. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go to my pocket because I did put a couple other things in there. <coughs> Excuse me. They have been <coughs> spraying us like bugs out here the last few days. So I have a bit of a tickle in my throat. So, um, let's see. I was going to get to this one as well today but first I will do this because well because 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 of the wonderful things he does da, 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 da. okay this is from reddit and uh, I don't remember who shared it but I stuck it in my pocket and it says hi I'm Matt Switch Swite, however you say that. Interim Executive Director of the Marijuana Policy Project, and I'm fighting Sessions Crackdown on Marijuana AMA. Okay. Booyah for you, Matt. 
I served as MPP's Director of State Campaigns from 2015 to 2017 and helped lead successful ballot initiative campaigns in 2016 in Maine, Massachusetts, and, Nav and Nevada. At the end of November 2017, I was named MPP's Interim Executive Director. I have a title. Today, there are reports that Attorney General Jeff Sessions will rescind the Cole Memo, which pro uh, provides protections for states with legal marijuana from the federal government. You know what? State really does, no pun intended, trump federal. Y'all don't get that. Home rule. Do you not understand that whole concept there? Push it, Jeffrey. Push it. See what's going to happen. Be careful what you put out there, honey, because you just might get back exactly what you put out, only tenfold. If the coal memo is rescinded, it would enable federal law enforcement agents to raid licensed, regulated, and tax-paying businesses. Ooh, that's, the states are not going to put up with that shit. Businesses that employ thousands of Americans and generate hundreds of millions of dollars in tax revenue for public services, including substance abuse treatment programs and new school construction. See, this is how they get it past a lot of people. All these people that say, oh, but marijuana is the demon weed. We can't go there. We can't have that. But then they say, oh, but tax dollars for schools, for the children, for playgrounds. You know, we almost got the sale of liquor through in my county simply by telling people, you know that all the tax collected when alcohol is sold uh, goes to parks and recreation. And it really was a rather close vote. <laughs> but it's because we let people know that, hey, those tax dollars, they're coming back and they're doing parks and playground equipment for the for the children <laughs> i mean you know if they can milk it why can't i right although i would prefer this to alcohol but hey that's okay uh let's see jeff sessions is ignoring the will of the people and he must be stopped yes I am determined to fight this move to legalize marijuana and to remind Mr. Sessions that marijuana must be a state's rights issue. Ask me anything. Well, anything? Really? Do you wear a kilt? You said anything. In any case, um, <clears throat> I don't want to legalize marijuana. I just want to decriminalize it. I just want, I want it to go back to being a plant. Just let it be a plant. Actually, let it be what it, everybody calls it, a weed. Those that do not wish to have it growing in their area will pluck it. And those that see them pluck it will go, I'll dispose of that weed for you. <laughs> oh. Okay. Editor's note. Hi, everyone. I'm signing off. Thank you so much for all the questions. Sorry I couldn't answer everything, but I've been bus it's been a busy day, as you can imagine. Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. So, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of comments on here. So, I'm just going to go ahead and share this link so y'all can peruse it at your leisure. So... And yes, Moosey, pot is profit in more ways than one. But Big Pharma does not want it to be allowed because if it does, Big Pharma pretty much goes to the wayside. Although I still think that um, um, I like, and yes, I do have to give credit where credit is due. Flash Rooney Head is the one that planted that seed inside my mind of, you know, vaping. All of Congress and all of the Senate while they're in session, you know, just kind of just in the ventilation system. <laughs> and then once they start asking for Doritos, then start saying, y you got to tell the truth first and you got to do this first. And then we will bring you all of the Doritos and Cheetos your heart desires. But first, you know, you, they want us to perform like trained monkeys. Let's make them jump through a few hoops. 
Okay. I'll just share this one, and I'll put it over here on the effin' site, because you got to do the puff puff pass over on the effin' site, and then I will trundle along to another one that just happens to be something to do with on natural. And no, I'm not talking about streaking. That stuff gets talked about during the dork table because Flash has his boob fetish. <laughs> so, okay. Where, where, where? I know, I seen them. I know, I seen the Puff Puff Passer dudes. There they are. Okay. Now, back to my pocket I go. And I know I shared this earlier in the RLM chat, but it is good info. As soon as it, there you go. GaiaGoodHealth.wordpress.com Foods that look like your body parts that they are good for, which I have seen repeatedly seen these different things and a lot of these you know they stay pretty consistent so there's been some of them that are a little bit different there's there are other ones that show you like 25 different foods or what have you but this one looked like a pretty kind of middle of the road one to go with I guess there's no doubt about the fact that maintaining a nutritious diet can keep your body healthy Basically, you're giving it the fuel it needs to run itself. So, yeah, you give it the proper fuel and it will operate properly. But when it comes to which foods benefit which parts of the body, science remains surprisingly sketchy. So here, nature gives us a hint as to what foods specifically help what part of our body. And you know what? Don't always fall on science because science is, you know, a lot of times a bunch of bullshit. You know, it's a bunch of gobbledygook thrown together. Chloe, I see you, sweetheart. You know, just a bunch of gobbledygook thrown together to get you to follow, you know, they it, their scientism shit it's like a ring that they put in your nose and then they keep adding links to that chain. The more complicated their explanation and, and their theories get, those are links added to that chain and they're dragging us all around by the nose. You do realize that, don't you? So stay away from science. The word of mouth and interact with people. That's, that's how you do this shit. Science, ah. I don't, I don't trust. They do not use scientific method for anything anymore, to me. Or at least of my opinion. In any case, here are certain foods that not only look like your body parts, but are also beneficial to these parts. For example, brain-boosting walnuts look just like the human brain. Coincidence? Maybe. Though these healthy foods are beneficial to the whole body, the list below is a fun reminder of what to eat to target specific areas. Remember, these foods are best and more powerful when they are eaten raw. Now, there are other foods out there that actually are better and more powerful after they've been cooked, but you have to cook them properly. Do not use a microwave. It's a nucarator. You're nuking your food. It's not just a saying. It is nuking your food. So here's a list of the foods that not only look like your human body, but are also extremely beneficial for them. Once again, number one, a walnut looks just like a little brain. Even the wrinkles or folds of the nut are similar to those of the neocortex. Walnuts help in the development of over three dozen neuron transmitters within the brain, enhancing the signaling and encouraging new messaging link between the brain cells. So I need to, I need to go nuts. That's just all there is to it. I need to go nuts, eat me some walnuts, and uh, maybe that way all the, <laughs> all the cobwebs will start connecting a little bit better. Maybe. Number two, onions. They look like the body cells. Research shows that onions clear, um, clear waste material from all of the body cells. 
Oh, the clear waste material. Do we read this properly? It depends on where you pause, Grammy. They clear waste from material uh, waste material from all the body cells, and they even produce tears, which wash the epithelial la layers of the eyes. Yes, and I do like onions, Grammy. I know you can't have them, but I love onions. Number three, ginger. It looks like the stomach, and it also aids in digestion. Indian and Chinese have been using it for over 5,000 years to calm an upset stomach, cure nausea, and motion sickness. It also slows down the growth rate of bowel tumors. Also, another thing, this is not on this list, but peanuts. Did you know that peanut butter, when it was initially invented, it, you had to have a prescription for it. It was used for nausea medication. Real peanut butter, not the shit you buy now. Real peanut butter where you have ground up peanuts and the oil and all that other fun stuff. Another thing they're also finding out, all of these children that have peanut sensitivities or peanut allergies, they finally realize that the reason why they have sensitivities and allergies to this stuff is because they're not exposed to it at an early age. They've been telling people, don't give kids peanuts until after they're like two or three or five or whatever. No, peanut butter doesn't hurt them. Both of my girls, when they were little, especially when they were cutting teeth, you know, I would give them something you, um, like a spoon or something, a, co a chilled spoon, and put some peanut butter in it. And the peanut butter would be something that would, you know, help settle their tummy because a lot of times when you're cutting teeth, you got an upset tummy. And the cold spoon cooled their gums down so they didn't hurt quite so much. So, and neither one of my children have peanut issues and none of my grandchildren have peanut issues and they all were exposed to it at an early age. So, putting that out there. Now, back to this list. Number four, a sliced carrot looks like the human eye. According to experts, eating carrots greatly enhances blood flow to the eyes, and carrots get their orange color from the plant chemical called beta-carotene, which reduces the risk of developing cataracts, which means I need to eat more carrots because I don't want no little cataracts driving around inside my eyes. All that exhaust fogs up the lenses, and it just really, yeah. I don't want pink cataracts. I don't want any kind of cataracts in my eyes. <laughs> Number five, grapes. They resemble the uh, um, avioli of the lungs. Yeah, get it spit out. The lungs were made of branches of ever smaller airways that finish up with tiny branches of tissue called alveoli. These structures allow oxygen to pass from the lungs to the bloodstream. A diet high in fresh grapes has shown to reduce the risk of lung cancer and emphysema. That just got added to my grocery list. I am going to have to go shopping soon, at least for fresh veggies. Number six, a tomato has four chambers and is red in color, which uncannily resembles the heart. Research has confirmed that tomatoes are loaded with lycopene, which is extremely beneficial for the heart in terms of blood flow and its supply. Number seven, kidney beans. Huh, <laughs> I wonder if they got that name because, because yeah, they actually heal and help maintain kidney function and are shaped exactly like human kidneys, hence their name. Kidney beans provide a variety of minerals and vitamins, which is why they are generally beneficial for your health. Number eight, sweet potatoes. I have just recently learned to eat sweet potatoes, but I can't, I can't do that, that sweet potato with the brown sugar and the marshmallow. I can't do that. That just, ugh. but... If they're baked and you put butter and salt, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> or sweet potato fries. I do like sweet potato fries. So there you go. But sweet potatoes resemble the pancreas and can actually balance the glycemic index of diabetics. The oblong sweet potato bears a strong resemblance to the pancreas 
and also promotes healthy function in that organ. Ta 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 ta. I'm thinking Mother Nature knew exactly what she was doing when she, or he, or it, however, I don't care. Mushrooms, when sliced in half, resemble the shape of the human ear. Mushrooms improve hearing abilities since they contain vitamin D, which is also healthy for bones, which I did not know that, and I'm not a big mushroom fan. <laughs> but I guess I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to learn. Avocados and pears are good for health and functioning of the womb and cervix in females. And look, they look just like these organs. Research shows that when a woman eats one avocado a week, it balances the birth hormones, sheds unwanted birth weight, and can even prevent cervical cancer. It even takes exactly nine months to grow an avocado from blossom to ripened fruit, just like a human baby. Now that is cool. I did not know that. Huh. Number 11. Celery, rhubarb, and bok choy. Now, every time I see celery, I still see that stupid meme of the floss. <laughs> it's just sick and wrong. In any case, celery, rhubarb, and bok choy are more, um, and more look just like bone structures. These foods specifically target bone strength. Bones are made up of 23% sodium, and these foods have sodium in them, which replenishes the skeletal needs of the body. And 12, last but not least, the root of ginseng. Ginseng is a holistic cure for nearly all body ailments, and no wonder it looks like a human body. Huh. Also, an additional mention, red wine, which is rich in antioxidants, and polyphenols, which um, including powerful resveratrol, looks like blood. And there's a blood thinning compound in red wine, so it reduces blood clots, which are associated with stroke and heart disease. It has been said that it is quite fascinating how these foods look like body organs they are actually good for. The food you eat can either be the safest and the most powerful medicine or the slowest form of poison. Make wise choices when it comes to health and lifestyle. And I, yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with that. And hey, what a quinky dink. I love tomatoes. <laughs> I really do. Yummy. Okay. Yeah, let me put this over here in the RLM. Ooh. Now, see, I like celery with peanut butter, and I've gotten to where I like doing, um, I like doing celery with peanut butter, and then I put craisins on top of it. And uh, ants on a log is what kids call it, although they do um, raisins instead of craisins, which craisins are dried cranberries. Um, but I do like... <sighs> okay, I think out of all of those, what was it? Um, sweet potatoes and shrooms were the ones that... But yeah, I'll just I'll just learn to eat more sweet taters and shrooms. I'll just have to. But my sweet potatoes will have to be with real butter and they will have to be with my uh, Himalayan salt. <laughs> they have to. And shrooms, well, I'll figure that out. <laughs> Nothing else, I'll put them in soup. Hmm. Okay, let's see. What else do I got? Oh, hi there, American Pie. What you got to say? <laughs> oh, you know what? American Pie over here on Mines commented on the uh, female traffic signal. And uh, he says, those bigots, how do they know that isn't actually a tranny? 
I hadn't thought of that American Pie. Thank you ever so much for that clarification because that's probably what it is. I really hadn't thought of that. Thank you ever so much. Okay. Yeah, don't poke your eye with a carrot. Okay. Um... Yes, Frumpy, craisins do rock. They are amazing. I, I make all kind of salads with craisins. Love them. Or just eat them by the handful. <laughs> there is that as well. So, okay. Now, let's get to something a little bit fun, shall we? This is from, um, oh, I need to put that over here on effing site. I'm slacking. I'm slacking. And where's the little guy that's going nom, 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 nom. There he is. Yes. Okay. This is from bradfrost.com. Facebook, you needy son of a bitch. <laughs> Now, this popped up because I, <coughs> excuse me, put something else in my, in my pocket. And sometimes pocket has a little drop-down thingy. And uh, in the little drop-down thing, I saw Facebook, you needy son of a bitch. And I went, oh, I got to check this shit out. I really do. This is, yeah, this is going to be fun. So, here we go. Several months ago, I turned off notifications from Facebook on my phone. Last week, I went ahead and removed the Facebook app from my phone. Now, I genu genuinely enjoy Facebook. I use it for keeping up with my family and my IRL friends who are spread all over the wor world. So, but lately, I've noticed a platform feeling increasingly grabby to the point where they've broken the fourth wall with me and now the whole experience is no longer enjoyable. They've gotten so brazen in their tactics to keep users engaged, I think it's no longer possible to be ca a casual Facebook user. So here's a few examples of what I'm talking about. You've shared X days in a row with your friends um, and your friends are responding. What's this? Do I really? I don't play Pac-Man. Bada bing, bada boom. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Damn it, I missed the duck. Okay. So, dear Jana, you've managed to share posts two days in a row that weren't completely lame. Love, Facebook. <laughs> No doubt this notification is inspired by Snapchat's Snap Freak feature, which encourages people to keep messaging each other every day in order to keep the streak alive. But holy crap and holy. Okay, it, he says holy crap. I say an holy. This feels so incredibly unnatural to say out loud. It's weird to see them so expressive explicitly come out and say, you're using the platform exactly how we want you to, and you have friends because of it. You want friends, right? You want to be loved, don't you? And own the only way to be loved is to keep posting. <laughs> Ooh, that's freaking creepy. Now I can appreciate the fact that businesses want to have a solid understanding of how their audiences are responding to posts. But it seems strange and disturbing to talk to regular users like they're all marketeers. Yes, it is. But Facebook is a needy some bitch. Exploiting good intentions. You know, people enjoy wishing people happy birthday. People enjoy taking a stroll down memory lane once in a while. Facebook has masterfully taken those kind and sentimental aspects of the human condition and manipulated them for clicks. For years, I found myself on the hamster wheel of wishing everyone a forced happy birthday. For years! Of course, I want people in my life to have a happy birthday. 
but I shouldn't feel like a tedious chore. It's valuable to know the birthdays of your friends and family, but it's lousy to use that as a hook to keep you coming back and playing the slots. Mm. Yeah, those lovely little reminders that every once in a while will pop up in your feed and go, you've got 10 people that have a birthday today. Aren't you going to say happy birthday to them? Well, you know, now that you mention it, no, I'm not. So there. You know, the same thing with now they have this fancy schmancy when you tell someone congratulations on a baby or getting married or getting engaged or whatever. Now it does these balloony things and it makes congratulations in a different color and larger font. And it's like, really? Really? All righty. I really wasn't going to go all out on that one, but all right. Hmm. The same thing holds true with memories. I occasionally enjoy looking back at experiences I have with my family and friends. And when this feature first rolled out, I found myself exploring a few posts of my past. But too much of a good thing gets swept up in the rest of the noise. And I notice this feature now pops up on a regular basis. I can almost hear them saying, Oh, hey, people seem to like this memory thing. Let's turn it up to 11. It went from being an occasional treat to just another notification clogging up the pipes. Oh, and while we're at it, how about this whole wonderful thing of, um, you've been friends with such and such for so many months or so many years. Don't you want to share this wonderful little 16 second keeps replaying video that shows basically your friends and your profile picture over and over and over and over. No, no, no. It's nice to be reminded that, wow, I've been on Facebook that long. Well, hmm, okay. Wow, really? I've known you that long? Jeez. Hmm. Apparently it's been too long. <laughs> With some of them, it has. Okay, the pay to play. I have a page for my business, which is where I share links to web design resources. I can appreciate the fact that businesses paying for posts keeps the big blue ship afloat. And I can appreciate the fact that businesses would want to know if particular posts would be especially good to promote. But lately, it seems like they've really turned the screws, trying to aggressively funnel you into paying to promote posts. This post is performing 95% better than others. Boost it! Okay, question. If it's performing 95% better than others, why do you boost that one? Why not boost one that's not doing so well? Seems like a little bit of a reverse psychology there. It's doing 95% better, so let's get it out there in front of everyone so it can really be obnoxious. Mm. Yeah, or you want to promote this post, don't you? Mm. No, I think me just putting it out there once was pretty much enough. If people don't see it, well... Pfft they will see something else that will probably be equally as important. In other words, it's Facebook. Seriously? Yeah. Jeremy Hahn says, Facebook is a bit pressure-y. Haven't heard from you in a while. Write a post. You said something witty. Pay us more for people to see it. No. There's no response from, or no respite from these messages, so it constantly feels like a gun to your head to get you to boost, promote, and pay. You know, sweetheart, it's not a gun to my head. It's not even a squirt gun or a nerf gun to my head because I just pretty much, and I have several pages that I'm an admin on. Um, one of them I actually created. And um, yeah, whenever I get that little pop-up, it's like, what? Scrolling, 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 keep that cursor rolling, Grammy. Ah, miscellaneous debris. Hey, one thing's become obvious over the course of the last year is Facebook's willingness to suggest more and more things that have nothing to do with my personal life experience. On one hand, 
I appreciate the sentiment of trying to expand someone's horizons to open them up to new people or places and experiences. But even if that's the spirit of what Facebook is trying to accomplish, the execution feels like a shallow grab for clicks. Ooh, so they created a poll. Big whoop de doo The one poll I participated in over on Fakeybook was the one for the essential oils, because I wanted to see all the different essential oils and see the ranking of the ones that I use and other ones out there. And somebody tainted the poll. So it's like, eh, I guess I won't be going there. Another thing that really pisses me off while I'm on a bitch and not sticking to the script. Um, Facebook, when I go on there and, you know, I'll have this really cool thing like from Dr. Axe or from some other page that I have liked and followed because they, you know, Dr. John Berkman, you know, people like that that, that share healthful tips for me. I will see a little post of theirs and just as I scroll down to see the whole post, it disappears. It's like, what the fuck? F-bomb, by the way. What the hell? Why do you guys do that? It's annoying. Stop it. Okay, apparently, um... Oh, hey, look at this. So-and-so just posted for the first time in a while. Big whoop-dee-doo. Maybe they have a life outside of Facebook. Maybe. My cousin updated his status for the first time in a while. Good for him. I'm so proud of him. So-and-so just joined Messenger. Be the first to send a welcome message or sticker. No, thank you. I don't have Messenger on my phone. I don't have Facebook on my phone. I don't have Messenger on several things. I don't actually have the Facebook app on my um, Amazon. Uh, ooh, what's that called? <laughs> my little Amazon tablet. I don't have the Facebook app on there or the Messenger app on there. I don't want them on there. I access Facebook when I am at a real live stand-up computer. Other than that, I don't access it because I just don't. So there. And I, ooh, that shit. I do get that Messenger stuff and it pisses me off. It's like, stop it. Stop it. And you people, anybody, I know there's nobody on Facebook listening, but still. I'm going to put this out there so the universe can grab hold of it and sprinkle some of the stop doing this crap dust on these people. Stop sending me the chain messages. Jeez Louise. Okay, Happy New Year from how many people? Oh, that's just 2,937th one that I've gotten. Really? How about you just post it on your wall? Just say, Happy New Year, everyone, and stop sending the frickin' messages. Messages are for a quick little personal pop-in, give you some info that you need to know, and then leave. That's what messages are for. Quick, to the point, get the hell out of there. Okay, apparently surfacing events you might be interested in isn't a bad idea, but execution is everything. For a platform that knows so much about me, I think it's incredible how far off the mark most of their suggestions are. You know, we haven't heard from you in a while. Yeah, that's because I have a life away from cyber world. Huh, go figure. This disrupts me perhaps more than anything, or disturbs me. Excuse me, read what's written, Grams. I started the draft of this post a few days ago and have since been taking care of work, going to a wedding, and living my life. But my several day absence from Facebook apparently got them really worried and they started sending me a slew of emails over a period of time highlighting recent posts from people including my wife's childhood friend's husband or your third cousin's brother Bubba twice removed. Facebook got worried when I didn't bite on any of those, so they decided to bring out the big guns. Brad, you have 19 notifications, one group update, one group invite, and nine messages, four pokes, and one event upcoming. 
You've missed a lot, Brad. Holy shit! My Facebook just blew up. So much has happened. I've apparently been poked four times, and I have no bruises to show for it. Despite my intention to not feed the beast, and rather simply analyze their tactics for bringing me back in, being poked four times was just too irresistible not to check out. So I clicked through to find this. One, two, three, four, four pokes. Yep. Apparently pokes from five years ago are still newsworthy. Anything gets you to come back. And you fell for it, Brad. You fell for it. <laughs> so, what to make of all this? This is what happens when the metric of how much time users spend using the, your thing supersedes the goal of providing legitimate value to your users. The tricks, hooks, and tactics Facebook uses to keep people coming back have gotten more aggressive and explicit, and I feel that takes away from the actual value the platform provides, which it's a very small value anymore. There are, of course, plenty of weighty, important topics worth criticizing. Facebook for... Um, or worth, worthy of criticizing Facebook for, from their perpetuating fake news to their role in influencing the election to enable the surveillance state and so on. But even this seemingly benign topic has huge ramifications, huge, on how people spend their time and live their lives. As users, you know, they call it users for a reason, you junkie. It's important to be aware of how the platform is manipulating you. As designers, it's important to be mindful of how much attention we're demanding from users and why we're demanding that attention in the first place. So that's where I'm at. I'm likely not going to delete Facebook entirely since I do genuinely enjoy staying in touch with the people in my life. And for better or worse, Facebook is where those people hang out. But I want to do, but, but I want to do, use, no, let's get rid of the do. But I want to use Facebook on my own terms, not theirs. This was posted the 11th of September, 2017. Wow! Brad Frost is a web designer, a speaker, a consultant, a writer, a musician, and he's located in, located in beautiful Pittsburgh, PA. Ah, he's done workshops for TEDx. Ah, huh? why, thank you, Brad, for your wonderful words of wisdom. I will go ahead and share these. Um... Hi, Sock Puppet! I see you, finally! Yay! Sock Puppet's here! Okay. Pyros. Who's a pyro? Uh, drove by a KFC and there were chickens lined up outside waiting. <laughs> That's funny, Sock. That's funny. Mmm. Okay. Let's see here. Ah, coffee, 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 coffee. Where do, I'll put this over here on mines as well. Just because it is one of the, I know I did not see this on mines. So it will be a new one. It's a clinger. Okay, uh, and I'll put it on the F inside. Oh, and you know what? I probably ought to, ought to, ought to, ought to, ought to go to the pig. I haven't been to the pig. I need to see what happened this date in, in history on the pig. Thank you, Hambo's lovely bride, for updating that as well. Okay, so... 
I will do a nanny nanny boo boo at fakey book. So, come on, bring up the pig. Come on, opera. Really slow. Um, ice weasel, is that what it is? Yeah, that was one of the IT, the IT guys were in today to fix a printer or a printer connection or communication with a computer, whatever. They were fixing that shit because I don't do networks. I'll, I'll fix up, you know, things that like if it needs to be cleaned out or if it needs to be adjusted or whatever. But when it comes to the networking shit, nope, you, you hire somebody to do that shit. I ain't crashing the system. Sorry. But um, he was telling me ice... Ice Weasel. Is that what it is? Um, uh, Firefox for Linux? He recommended I try that for a browser. Grimmy. I'm putting that out there because I'd already told you about the operating, the um, broadcasting thing that he told me about. So, over here on the pig, the word of the day is present. That part of eternity, eternity dividing the domain of disappointment from the realm of hope. Ah, yes it is. What a way to put it. Thanks, guys. Quotable quotes. A critical mass of real people either don't own or are completely mystified by or lost the operator's manual for that ubiquit ubiquitous household fixture. The mirror from Free State of Pig. Yes, I know an awful lot of people that, wow, have you not looked in a mirror? You might go change if you did. <laughs> wow, that is a fashion faux pas, honey. No, you don't, you don't wear your pajama pants and pull the clean up over your saggy boobs and then go shopping at Walmart. That, that's not a onesie. That's gross. Okay, and down to um, what? Okay, I'm going to read this date in history, and then there was something else that caught my eye. Yes. Ice Weasel. Oh, it's okay? Oh, okay. You prefer... Thanks, Grimmy. Okay, this date in history, the 5th of January, 1825, during his first duel, Alexandra Droopy Drawers Dumas... Uh, Dumas Pear makes a lasting impression on all those in attendance when his pants fall down. Ah, oops, is that where dumbass comes from? And this date in history, the 5th of January, 1855, King Camp Gillette, the inventor of the safety razor, is born. The rest of his life is an endless series of scrapes and very close shaves. <laughs> ba -dum -bum -bum. Go on. Yoinks. Okay. Drinking holidays. This is in the um, Today's Tasty Tidbits section. So. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm looking at some. Okay. So, Cupid. I don't know how Cupid spends the off season, but you can bet the cheesy Hallmark card that he isn't practicing his marksmanship. Sometimes that little winged devil in diapers gets it right. In other memorable instances, rational adults are compelled to ask, what the hell was he smoking? Given his spotty track record, I suggest making your house a no-fly zone. Better safe than till death do us part sorry. That is so true. Yes. Thank you, Hambo. On drinking holidays here in the U.S. of A, we have two holidays which are, by and large, little more than an excuse to get gassed on adult beverages. I have some issues with them, but not the ones you might expect. Excuse me. Hick, burp, cha, cha, cha. Two drinking holidays for the whole year just isn't getting her done. We need more of them. Since we only have two drinking holidays, why are they located so close together? We get these two within the first two months, or two and a half months, then we're expected to suck it up for the next nine and a half months. Unacceptable. 
If we're going to have a holiday devoted to getting blitzed on adult beverages, it should be scheduled on the one day of the year when we the people need it. April the 16th, the day after those elected tormentor scumbags raid our wallets. In addition to regularly scheduled drinking holidays spread throughout the year, we should each be given one floating drinking holiday that we can use when we or when the need arises. So, yep. Okay. So that was the pig. Now I'm going to go back to, <coughs> excuse me. Actually, I think I'm going to do a search for Damien. Oh, maybe I need to do that in my pocket. Because I can't remember his last name. <laughs> Come on, go back. Come on, Pocket. Find Damien for me. He's so funny. Ah, Damien James. There you go. Okay. Ooh. That is an older one. So, let's go to the official Damien James. And Damien. That's January 31st of 2017. I know you've written something since then. My dear, where are you? Ah, here we go. So, Fake news, the deliberate lie that is unraveling the world, that's more pervasive than you'd think. Now, have I read this one, Damien? I think I have read this one, sweetheart. So, let's see. And it's a very long one. Okay, yeah, I have, because that's from May. Jeez, Damien. Okay, here's one. The end of the Western civilization and globalism begins with Trump. Really? Welcome to the beginning of the end, folks. Oh, really, Damien? For those of you who have been reading my blog, you knew where this election would lead us. Hell, even if you did, um, even if all you did was watch the vomitous mess known as the 2016 presidential campaign, you probably had an inkling of what's on the horizon would be inevitable. Personally, I'm fairly excited. It's not every day that the world has been corrupted and perverted through countless generations, crumbles um, back to anarchy and chaos, and starts over again. But let's get to the why. It's inevitable at this point and not get distracted by emo babble. The Trump administration will help usher in this glorious end and for many of you, it'll seem unthinkable. You voted for him because you thought he could save us from decades of corruption and outright political incompetence. He won't be able to do it. For others of you who were noodling your head with a smug, I told you so, Hillary was the only answer with that smirk painted on your face, you are even more ignorant and self-deluded than the Trump supporters who are shaking their heads in denial that Trump will be the end. So let's get something straight. Hitlery was an absolutely unqualified nightmare in waiting, and electing her would have been an unmitigated disaster for the entire human race. Didn't matter who you voted for back in November, this selection, he says election, I say selection, tomato, tomato, was more of a vote as to what kind of end Western civilization and humanity would get to experience, then who is more qualified for the position? 
With Hitlery, you would have gotten global slavery to a new world order where your rights weren't protected by the Constitution and wouldn't and would have been a, of less concern than how best you can be used and tossed aside like a cheap diaper. Don't take my word on it. Go through the TPP agreement that she first touted as the gold standard, only to barely flip-flop on it once everyone realized that it was a flaming train wreck to find out how it would have started. The end she was offering was enforceable slavery with her and her cronies holding the Massa Whip and the inevitable end of any form of freedom. The end that Trump offers, at least, affords the opportunity for people to have a fighting chance at rebuilding a free society once it falls apart. But wait! Damien, in your blogs you said that Trump was the best choice for POTUS. You even posted a mock public service announcement video that nobody watched advocating voting for Trump. How can you switch sides now? You might say that, but you're wrong. I merely pointed out that Trump was the least objectionable candidate, not that he was worth voting for. That was me pointing out that if you were slated for your last meal before your execution, the turd sandwich option might be slightly less revolting than the drunken binge projectile vomit soup that's been liberally seasoned with skunk spray and battery acid. And, in spite of full disclosure, I didn't vote. Or in the spirit of full disclosure, I didn't vote. I'm merely a witness who's tasked with observing the fiasco, the outcome, of your problem fault. So how is Trump doomed to fail this country and usher in the end of our civilization? Because of how he ran his campaign. How many people there are in the system that can ensure that effective change is thwarted. How he may not understand the complexities of the problems he wishes to address and because he's getting advice from people who don't know their asses from the hole in the ground and perhaps most importantly because he made promises to the American people that he was serious in fulfilling. All of these will play a role in why Trump will fail. First and foremost, he pissed off both political parties before he won the selection. This was how his campaign gained so much steam. We're going to drain the swamp. Demon craps and rebloodlicans are to blame for the state of this country, etc. Everyone knows that the political system is corrupt and incompetent. But politicians, or those who typically run for political office, have always adhered to one unspoken rule. We shall not call out the whole truth about the political process of which we will be, uh, be soon to be a major part. We shall only speak disparagingly about our fake political rivals. Ignore how our party is just as much to blame as they are, and we will not make serious commitments to fixing the political system that allows us to reap ridiculous benefits. We are free to say that we will, but we will make no legitimate effort to actually address the issue that are affecting this country. Nothing unites people better than a common enemy, and Trumples gave both parties one once he started revealing that the corruption that's endemic to Washington and the political system infects both sides. Translation? He won't get nearly as much accomplished as he might think he can because everyone wants him to fail. They'd rather burn the whole thing down than help him fix the problem that they, in both parties, made. Next up, the problems affecting the country are too large and numerous, and there are way too many dipshits that can get in the way of addressing those problems. 
the dingbats in the Ninth Cir Circuit Court of Appeals, and judging from the nonsensical content of his written opinions this year, the truly ignorant, overly emotionally sensitive, partisan hack in sheep's clothing, Derek Watson, can't seem to pen a legal op opinion that is entirely supported by wishful dreams, drug-fueled imaginations, and unicorn toots. Trump didn't count on the fact that the judicial branch had become so heavily clogged with mentally deficient social justice warriors that they're far more likely to use dystopian parodies of justice instead of the real deal. Once you can use appeals to emotion, a major logical fallacy, to justify why something isn't constitutional, instead of consistent and impeccable reasoning that correctly cites judicial precedents and reality, you can say that anything is unconstitutional because anything can be rationalized as being hurtful or unfair to some group or another. And the immigration issue only exposed the numerous halfwits and idiots that are intent on sabotaging Trump in the judicial system. We haven't even started talking about those in the federal bureaucracy, the intelligence community whose job is spreading disinformation and whom Trump lambasted repeatedly for their inconsistency and lack of proof for their claims they made during the campaign in the first four months of his presidency. The law enforcement community or those in Congress who are actively working to sabotage any real change to the status quo. The problems affecting the U.S. are also more complex than Trump seems to realize. He sees the bleeding body of America on the operating table and he wants to do something. But he only knows of two tools, the hammer and the sword. Call me crazy, but a good doctor should know the intricacies of the body on which he is operating, as well as the most effective treatment for what ails it. And sorry, but neither a hammer nor a sword is best suited for stopping massive hemorrhaging. Yeah, spit that out. It's a good part of why many of his proposals come off as vague, contradictory, or excessively simplistic. He's also getting some pretty terrible advice from people who really shouldn't be trusted with programming an alarm clock, let alone concocting national policy. His tax philosophy is quite similar to that which was implemented by Kansas resident dumbass, yes, agree, Governor Sam Brownback, who, despite having an overwhelmingly far-right conservative dominated legislature that enabled him to enact the we'll slash taxes on the top earners in the state because it'll spur economic growth and balance the budget fiscal policy, Kansas fell off the fiscal cliff, so to speak. Yes, it did. Brownback and Co. had to raid the Kansas Department of Transportation budget, raise taxes on, on all manner of vices, booze, smokes, etc., and performed some very creative accounting to delay payments to the Kansas Public Employee Retirement System, or CAPERS, just to keep the state out of bankruptcy. Yeah. Brown backside. Yeah. Growth didn't explode quite as explosively as expected. It was more of a fizzle and a dud. After eight years and his constituents finally revolted against him. I'm sure that Trump and his advisors have taken that into mind as they suggest doing the exact same thing. If at first you don't succeed, don't change what you're doing. It's probably because you didn't screw up hard enough to make it work the first time. Trump has an EPA head who spent his life trying to tear down the EPA. Huh, cool. He needs to get rid of it. You have a head of the Department of Education who's never been publicly educated. Okay, so they 
they've not gone through the flaming hoops of that debacle. Never been a teacher. Never had her children publicly educated. Never had to take out student loans. Doesn't appear to know anything about the education system in general. And has been an outspoken advocate for dismantling the Department of Education altogether. So far, I don't have a problem with this, Damien. I don't know why you do. They're almost as poorly suited for their positions as Shitlery was for Secretary of State, which, yeah, or any of her other previous appointments. And I'm sure Trumpel's picks will be similarly inclined to do what's best for America and fix a failing system instead of gutting it to the point that the whole thing comes crashing down. Sarcasm alert. Oh, I think it needs gutted. I really do. And finally, I like to mention, or like I mentioned earlier, the last reason that Trump will fail is because he made all those promises to make America great again, and sadly, he probably genuinely meant them. From what I can tell, Donald Trump has two settings, snarky, foul-mouthed, combative troll, and genuinely concerned man of the people who desperately wants to address what ails this country. He could have, and maybe should have, quit if Hillary weren't running during the presidential campaign when most baloney liberal polls showed him greatly trailing the Democratic candidate. But I think that second setting of his and his ego kept him from doing so. And this is the biggest reason he'll fail. Because he wants so desperately to turn the American ship around They'll, he'll reach for any and every tool in the cabinet to try to make that happen. Even those that are better left alone for everyone's sake. It'll be too little, too late. Once he starts reaching for those tools, and with everyone trying to sabotage him at every step of the way, he will fail on all his initiatives, and America will fall with him. And if you hasn't, haven't noticed... It has already begun. So kick back, relax, and enjoy the end of Western civilization as we know it. I don't have a problem with that. I really don't. I know that may just sound totally heartless, but I'm going to go ahead and share this because I'm sure I misread a few things. So I'll let you guys read it yourself. Um, I do like Damien James. He has a wonderful way with words. <sighs> and that was a fun way to end the show because I am out of time, y'all. I hope y'all had a good time. I know I did, kind of perusing around and jumping all over God's green earth. Um, be sure to stick around because later on this evening will be Grimner and Moose Girl with the Freaker's Ball here on the RLM. Also, tomorrow morning, my time, 11 o'clock, my time, or noon Eastern time, Flash a Rooney Dork and yours truly will be on the dork table here on the Real Liberty Media. And then um, I'm not sure what all else is going on tomorrow afternoon. Maybe JJ's will pop on and play a little bit. Sunday at noon Eastern time will be Grimner with the blues and hopefully a rousing game of trivia in the RLM chat. Then, directly following Grimner, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, Hal Anthony is going to jump in. He's going to grab your ass and drag you behind the woodshed and open up a can of whoop-ass on yo ass. Then Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Time will be Gary L. and Gigi's Boo with The Road Less Traveled. So all kinds of really cool, interesting, informative things going on here on the RLM. And then, you know, you can also listen to podcasts. And sometimes you actually get something where I'm out there blathering and being a total goofball. Why? Because I can. <laughs> and because you listen. And I truly do appreciate it. Y'all are awesome. Um, let's see. Do I have... I have five minutes. Wow, I went through that so fast. What the hell? I don't like cutthroat capitalism. Um, Western civilization is not very civil. Yeah. That's one of those... Civilization is kind of an oxymoron, don't you think? 
there's an awful lot of uncivil behavior in a lot of quote unquote civilizations. Okay, let me put Damien over here on the mines. Oops. <laughs> it helps if I can spell. Okay. And I will put him over here on the effin site as well, just because I can. Because I like Damien. But Damien, you're being a slacker. May? Seriously? All kinds of things have happened since May. And you don't have any updates since May? Come on, Damien. You need to step it up, dude. Okay, let me find my little reader guy. The little good news guy. There he is. Okay. Now... Do I have one more little funny, just something, little zippity? I do have just a, ooh, religion versus science. <laughs> That's another Damien James. Hmm, I may have to get to that one later. Hmm, marriage equality, the final battle of l free love versus religious sentiment. Reason you aren't invited. Oh, that's another lovely one from Damien James. How wonderful. I am going to have to read that one. I don't think I've read that one. Oh, well. Thanks, y'all, for joining in. And be sure to stick around or check back to listen in to the Freakers Ball. I am going to, I guess, cut out of here just a little bit early because um, I'm not seeing just any quick little ditties. So uh, stay warm out there. I know it's colder than Hobbsy Hell on the East Coast. Beetle? Stay warm, hon. Do you have a fireplace? Keep it going. Lots of blankies. And, uh, yeah, even you, Sock, from what I understand, it's a wee bit on the Bursey, little bit on the nipply side down there in Florida as well. So, 